founded. There are a lot of things going on in our country that we, shouldn't check, we should not take sitting down. The Christian church has a responsibility. Our nation was born in part during the prayer meeting on the Mayflower. The founding fathers, they wanted a place to bow before the living God. They wanted a place that you had religious freedom. But primarily it was Christian freedom that they were speaking of. You know, the Bible it was an open book. It was the first textbook in the schools. You remember that? Our Constitution and Declaration of Independence were founded from the principles of you know, the New Testament church. You know, we got in God we trust on our money. Um, you know, it was a postage stamp from you know, the Bible. It says, proclaim liberty throughout all the world, all the land. And our schools, I mean, our schools were established to teach God's Word. I mean, the, 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 the biggest colleges, the Ivy Leagues, all, all those kind of things, I mean, they were, they were, for the large part, started to train ministers, train preachers, all those kind of things. I mean, today, the Bible even, it barely even tolerated, if it is at all, at some of those places. You know, students who went to schools where, you know, now crisis teachers planted seeds of doubt. They were influenced by the surrounding stuff that, that has deified man and humanized God and glorified sex and all those kind of things. I mean, th those, those, those same schools used to teach how to serve God. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Dr. Bill Bright from the Campus Crusade of Christ, he said this. He said, I am convinced that unless there is a wholesale turning to Christ this year, we will lose our nation. Last year, 800,000 people in today's world lost their freedom. We could lose ours. You know, some people say that 80% of the world now lives under dictatorship. And things can happen quicker than you think. I don't preach politics. I'm preaching the Bible. I'm telling you the way things are. Uh, you know, we're pretty much the last stronghold of democracy. But let me tell you something. A man supposedly wrote a number of years ago. This was in 17, uh, the late 1700s. He said this. A democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves generous gifts from the public treasury. From that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidates, the candidates promising the most benefits from the public treasury, with the result that a democracy always collapses over loose fiscal policy, always followed by a dictatorship. The average age of the world's great civilization from the beginning of history has been about 200 years. During those years, these nations always progress, listen now, through the following sequence. From bondage to courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependence, from dependency back again to bondage. Did I tell you something? The church should not take that sitting down. No, we need to stand up for a free nation. And I'm not sure we can remain free unless we become more real in our Christianity. Jesus said that if the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. You remember that? Amen. And I'm telling you something, God help us, you know, if we don't do something soon. You know, there was a, I got invited to a, a breakfast with a guy who was running for, running for Congress a while back. And he wanted to meet with some of the pastors. And a lot of times they do that. They want to jump on and get the Christian vote, whatever. And I was not interested in nothing he had to say as far as his political views. I, first thing I want to hear about was, was this man saved or not. He was kind of giving that impression. But when he gave his testimony, it didn't make me comfortable. I didn't feel any better. I didn't like his testimony because it sounded like a, what you would tell, sounded like what I told you when you came to my house and witnessed me the first time when I was lost. That's what it sounded like. People trying to get the Christian vote. I want to vote for the man who best represents the word of God. That's what I'm talking about. I know we ain't going to have anybody perfect, but who be best represents the word of God. Uh, I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, our country would always be uh, the nation we love, and it would always be free and joyful as long as the church will not take something sitting down. We'll stand up and speak up. I mean, we need to tell the world, you know, the, uh, you know that Jesus is, 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 is coming back one of these days. We need to tell the world you need to come to Jesus and just let him take care of everything else. Let him handle it. Just try it. He'll give you rest. You know, I mean, I mean God bless our, our, our country. Now, let me give you the last thing here. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. There might be somebody here today. Right. You're lost. I don't know. You may have never been saved. Maybe you're doubting it. I don't know. But I tell you what, Jesus won't take that sitting down. He stands at the door and knocks. He said he stands at the door and knocks today. All you have to do is open that door and receive the free gift of salvation. Salvation is a gift. I can say this gift is going to be for Brother Danny right here. And I can hold this gift out, but until Brother Daniel reaches out and takes it, 
it doesn't become his. Salvation's for everybody, but you got to reach out and take it. You got to take the salvation. That's that's the gift from God. You know, Jesus. And I'm telling you something. If Jesus won't take that sitting down, this fat, bald-headed preacher right here ain't gonna take it sitting down either. I'll be happy to lead you to the Lord today. Pastor White will be happy to lead you to the Lord today. I mean, when we give the invitation, all you got to do is come down and say you want to be safe. It's not hard. I promise you, it is. One of the things that's weird about it is, is that first step out of that aisle. That's the hardest step to take is the first step. But once you take that step, you'll just glide the rest of the way. God will be with you. Like I say, and I know there are people in this world that they, they hate to hear preaching and, uh, you know, all, all those kind of things. that they don't, they don't like Bible preaching and they just, you know, ready, ready to get out of here. They come out of ritual. They want me to shut up. The world wants us to shut up. But let me tell you something. I ain't going to shut up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stand up, keep lifting him up. One of these days, I'm going to get called up, and if the devil don't like it, he can stick it up his nose. That's the way it works. Now, let's have uh, everyone standing.